Bum, ba, bum, bum. Happy t -t Tuesday. <laughs> Ch -ch 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 -ch. I'm going to let you do the intro so I can just do the things. Let me know if we're <clears throat> actually in the places. Uh, yeah, as best as I can tell. Yeah, we're in the places. Yeah, okay, cool. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Uh, old souls and seekers, family, welcome, welcome. Uh, if this is your first time, <clears throat> with us on a Tuesday. We'd love to say hi to you. If this is not your first time, we'd love to say hi to you too, but uh, just send you a special hi. Guy is going to drop a link. So we use this um, software to do this called uh, Restream. And so if you're on Facebook and we sometimes don't see your name on here when um, when you message us. So Guy, if you can drop that link in for them, and if you click that link, it'll basically pull your name from Facebook, and then that way we can actually see it here on Restream. So, um, hey, Janine, and hey, Natalie. Oh, Natalie, today's going to be a good one for you. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I love that you keep showing up to these. And... Um, yeah, so the way these Tuesdays work is it's your opportunity to be with us and we offer free training every single Tuesday at this time. So if you're someone that just kind of wants to dip your toes in, then uh, this is a great way for you to just come and check us out and see the way that Guy and I share and what we share about and if we resonate with you, et cetera. So this would be a great place. And then... Um, we don't sell anything on these calls. We will uh, invite you if you do want to learn more about how this work can be implemented into your life. We have a team and that keep team keeps growing and we're basically just going to offer you an opportunity to have a chat with someone from our team um, just to kind of get a, a lay of the land of where resources are, what you're looking for, and they'll be able to guide you and let you know like hey, listen, this is a great group for you. You can go grab resources here. This is an awesome group for you. Maybe you can talk to one of our coaches and see what this work continues like. Uh, so we make it very, very, very easy for you guys to uh, jump in and participate really however you want to participate. Beautiful. Something, <clears throat> something I want to add to that is like, this work is very, very different than most things that you see out there. Um, Guy and I come from a background of 20 years of doing this work. We've done all the mindset things that you can imagine, uh, anything that you've read and heard, like this, that was our world for a very, very, very long time. And what we find is that most people that come and join our old souls and seekers group have a very similar journey story to us, meaning that. You've also, oh, hold on. My camera just went off. Ay, stupid cable. <laughs> so your face, finicky. Your face is uh, beautiful, though. Is it back or no? No, not yet. No. Maybe turn, turn off it on your camera, perhaps. Yeah, it's black now. All right, there you go. There you're back on. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so what we found is that a lot of people that join the old souls and, and seekers group uh, are similar to us. Like you've done a lot of work. You've read a lot of books and like, just, we can kind of do this here. Uh, how, just by commenting in the box, like how many years have you been on your personal development journey? Like how long have you been seeking? How long have you been on this path? And I just want you to get as people share, like this is kind of who comes into this group, right? It's like, this is not your first soiree into personal development. 
And so what we found is that after doing this work for about 15 years, we kind of like came up against the edges of <clears throat> the, I guess you could call like diminishing returns, right? So Alex is saying 14 years. There's like a diminishing return scale, meaning like things that we learned years and years before weren't quite having the same impact. So we have 14 years, 14 years, five years. Uh, great to have you, Caroline and Barry. It seems I think you guys are newer to the group here. Um, one year. Yeah. And so the things that we share here, while we have programs that are more in the mindset world as well, like we are about marrying two very unique philosophies, which you'll hear us talk about a lot, which is like the growing up work and the waking up work. And we kind of create that bridge. So while we help feed your mind, because your mind loves to be fed with more information, it's always like, give me the next greatest thing. Give me the next greatest thing, right? After 15 years of doing that and just getting really frustrated that we're still dealing with the same things over and over and over, we started to look at other modalities, uh, ones that have to do more with energy and frequency, alignment in the body, creating um, different practices that allow us to dissipate certain emotional charges that happen. And in doing so, uh, have created something which is very, very unique. And so everyone that's here, whether it's your first time or many times, I really want to acknowledge you because this work is very unique and it calls to people. And that's why like, we don't feel like we need to sell this to people because the work just calls people. And like, when you know you're ready, you're ready. So we're going to always give you on these Tuesdays a taste of what we're about and what we do. <clears throat> and that way you can really feel for yourself whether we're the right guides for you at this part of your journey. You know, I was talking to another coach, wow, 27 years. Uh, Course in Miracles, 1990s, amazing. Wow. Some of you guys are, are really uh, in it for a while. So yeah, like there's a million coaches, right? All over the world. And the beauty is that there's place and space for all of them. Because at the end of the day, just like, the millions of Italian restaurants all over the world, we all still have our favorites, right? And like, if we resonate with you, great. We'd love to, to be on this journey, walking side by side with you. And if not, great, stick around, take care, like, like enjoy the content in, in whatever way works for you. And uh, hopefully we, we get to spend more time together. So today we're gonna actually talk about uh, this judger part. Um, and how we judge ourselves. How many of you guys in the comment box just say, I know what we're talking about when we say this judger, this part that's like incessantly berating you about not being good enough, uh, not being fast enough, not being smart enough, uh, judging events, current events that are happening in the world, judging the way that your kids put on their shoes or don't put on their shoes, <laughs> judging the way that people drive, just, right? Like you just, this, this incessant part that's always there. So we're really going to dive in on that today and uh, give you guys some, <laughs> oh, so me, um, and give you guys some tools on how to actually, I'm going to say create space from this aspect of ours. Um, yeah, why don't you, do you wanna jump in and kind of start the sure. convo? Yeah, so just to give her some context here, we'll, we'll talk a little bit philosophy, we'll talk a little bit about how these things get created, and then we'll kind of talk about um, a remedy, if you wanna call it that. I hesitate to use the word cure, because humans have this, uh, you know, again, we've been coaching for, for over 20 years, tens of thousands of people. So when I say humans, I'm kind of encapsulating our experience working with people more than the broad spectrum of the entire planet, because certainly there's 8 billion people on the planet. I can't speak for everybody and what their experiences are, but just what we, in, in a general sense, experience coaching with people and what they're they're struggling with. And there is this overwhelming sense, I think, in the spiritual and personal development communities that like we're going to get to this point in our work where something that we've been dealing with for most, if not all of our lives, 
will spontaneously and completely disappear forever to the point where we will no longer deal with it. And and I, and I, you see the same kind of idea with like money. The people just think like, oh, if I just become a millionaire, like this this issue I have will finally disappear. This stress and like I'm as guilty of that as anybody, right? Like when I'm stressed out and it's about money, I'm like, oh, I'm absolutely freaking sure that if I just add a zero, you know, to, to my bank account, like all is going to be well. But time and time again, um, you know, from people we've worked with, we've worked with people who have close to billion dollars in net worth. We've work people who are, are literally doing this work out of the trunk in their car, you know, so vast, vast array. And we're very proud of being on both sides of those spectrums is that we, we know as a scientific fact, right? If you want to call all science facts, factual, of course, we're always growing in our, in our understanding is that energy is never being created is never being destroyed, but it is transitioning into other forms of energy. So if you're dealing with fear in your body around money, around health, around relationships, whatever it might be, the solution that you think that you're working towards when you get there, uh, the energy is transitory. Like the fear is not going to go away. It's just going to find something else to hook itself onto, to be afraid of, right? Uh, if you're afraid that you don't have enough money, well, you know, Elon and I have in and out of times in our lives had a good amount of money. And I could tell you that the, then the worry changes and the changes about keeping it, growing it, not losing it, not being an idiot, not sabotaging it, right? Like the, these other fears come about. So like, but the undercurrent of the source of the fear is identical. It just finds a new story to attach itself to. And so what we want to start realizing is that like trauma, we can look at it this way, is that a part of you, like some part of you in your body and your energetics and your awareness gets stuck in time, Right. Like if I, if you told me I had this issue and we started kind of like looking back at it, like what's the history of that? Eventually you're going to come back to some really early memory of trauma, right? Like mom and dad left you, you got lost in a Kmart, if you guys remember what that is, uh, you know, or like, um, you know, or, or like somebody bullied you or whatever it might be. And you have this like really deep lane kind of memory around it. And then there's this like experience now as we grow, you know, I, I, I keep I keep having this thing that in, in culture, we need to get rid of the word adult and we just need to start calling people big kids because there is this feeling that when I become a, an adult, I've left ch like childlike things behind the wonder, the play and the way that a child deals with emotional baggage or trauma, which to an adult might feel really uncomfortable because they're like expressing really big, you know, they're thrashing their bodies, they're yelling and I want to bring your awareness that nobody teaches a child to do that. Like it's intuitive for a child to respond to fear. It's intuitive for a child to respond to sadness and loneliness. As the adult, we're pointing at it and we're saying we're trying to help them identify like, hey, that's sad. And even that is kind of like, are we really doing them a service by by giving them a definition of an emotion that they're having? So they're like, oh, that's what sad is, right? Or like, how do I know that what feels like sadness in my body is not what feels like pleasure in Elon's body? But at some point, someone pointed at it, right? So it's very, I don't want to get lost in that, but I want to just kind of like point to these inevitabilities that happen. And then when we become adults, we've defined what being an adult is. It's more rigid. It's more responsible. They don't play as much. And again, I know there's exceptions to all these rules. So we want to start looking at as like, even though we've transitioned and we're continuing to transition, it's not like growth as a human being stops. We spend a lifetime learning, but we really think of these like informative years as creating and cultivating like a foundation of personality and ego and humanism. And there's a lot of truth to that, right? Because a lot of what you are is sown in that time. So much of the trauma that we carry throughout our lives is really just unresolved parts that continue to interact with your surroundings and your world with the way you feel about money and relationships in the same way that you did when you were a child so you know and going back to my original thesis here is that like that's not going to disappear anytime soon and if you are playing the game to try to make energy disappear energy that can't be created can't be destroyed can be transitory though we want to start looking at it as, uh, let me try to make this aspect of myself disappear. I don't like this part of me. I don't like this personality trait. I don't like this part of my identity. It keeps sabotaging me. It keeps ruining my relationships. It keeps making me lose money, whatever it might be for you. 
again, like, how is that going? Right. We always say this, like, how's that going? Trying to get rid of that. And have you noticed that the more you try to get rid of it, the more it actually seems to be in your face. It's like the more you try to get rid of a bully, the more it beats the crap, the more he or she beats the crap out of you. Right. So it's like, it's the same thing. We want to start learning, like, how do we actually work with it? And that's where a lot of people miss. They think like, I got to figure out a new way. I got to figure out how to get around it. I got to figure out how to dominate it. I got to figure out how to manipulate it. I got to figure out how to negotiate with it. None of that stuff works. Like none of it works. It may give you the illusion of working for like a short period of time, but you just wait, right? Like life is this experience that has us deal with stressful situations. And there is certain kind of stress in your life that you just, it's easy and flowy for you. You know how to deal with it, right? It doesn't really overwhelm your system. And there's a lot of stuff that does. And for a lot of us, we get very overwhelmed. We're not even aware because we're not subtly energetically aware of our system. We're actually not aware about how overwhelmed we get. And then these these parts, these distortions, these trauma, traumatized identities basically come, hack our system, take over and just start running their programs. And this is like the farthest thing from a person being aware. Okay, so how many of you guys are just, just so I'm cluing in here, how many of you guys are, are tracking this experience? Like, you know, in your life that you've tried these things, but this is what Elon and I were really dealing with. And say I say I or yes in the chat box if you are. And this is what Elon and I kind of started dealing with about five, six years ago after 15 years of coaching so many people successfully, uh, showing people how to start businesses, marketing, sales, you know, all like all these success habits that Western minded people kind of go after. And ultimately, the, here's the frustration that we found is like, how come that part is not fucking letting go? Why can I not stop doing that, even though I'm completely aware of it? And it, maybe even while it's happening, I'm aware of it. But it seems like, OK, I know, like, I don't want to yell here. I don't want to get upset here. Happens anyway. Right. And then you like kind of come down from that. And you're like, oh, my God, like, I know better. Why is why? Why? And so, and so that's kind of where we want to start transitioning. We're not, we're not vilifying mindset work. We still teach it. It's, you know, the structure of the mind, psychology, philosophy, how to reframe, how to take and, you know, be more responsible, have integrity in your life. Fundamentally, really, really important stuff. And if you're like, if those words I just said were like in one ear, out the other, you have no idea what I'm talking about. Like, I would actually venture to say like, you should start there. Like, that's where you want to get really good at the work. Like yeah. get that foundation. In. However, if you are meeting me in this metaphor and this story that I'm telling you about this, like it's frustration that starts happening because you're like, okay, how many more books am I going to read? Like, it, th does the next one have this magical thing that this doctor is going to say that that doctor didn't say, or that this spirituality didn't, didn't start saying 6,000 years ago. And here's how, you know, like you're at the end of that rope is you read every book and it sounds the same. The person may have found a new cool marketing buzzword, right? Like it's the, it's this process or it's this thing. Like, I mean, to be a frank, like we call it ours, the awareness effect, right? Why? Because it makes it more approachable to the mind. But like what we're basically saying is like, is a spiritual practice, right? Like a personal and spiritual practice. And when you apply it, there's going to be some kind of result. And so we want to start talking about like, if you're reading the books, and it's like, yes, yeah, the same kind of stuff. But yeah, maybe you get like a small insight from it, but it's not like blasting you open and changing your entire life. And you're like, all right, uh, let me go ask my friends for the, their favorite book. Maybe that one has the answer because, you know, uh, Brenda over there seems to have a really good life, you know, or whatever it might be. Um, and so that's what we want to look at. We really want to look at making that transition and starting to marry your wealth of wisdom in the mindset space with awareness and energy. Okay, so we want to marry the mindset space with awareness and and energy and if you're like and if your eyes just roll back thinking like we're going to start talking some woo woo stuff over here i want to tell you that this is very steeped in science today this is steeped in what we're seeing in quantum physics this is steeped in what we've known about um health and, and, and healthy attachment systems for a long time and so there's a lot of different sciences kind of marrying and even corroborating what has been shared through ancient wisdom practices for a very very long time but because we're starting to get some scientific feedback here, we're also starting to understand what is actually happening in the body while this occurs. Like, bro, can you um, briefly just share about um, your aura ring and like what you see when you meditate and what we see when we're in group fields of meditation? I'm just just to kind of give people a, like a, a biophysical kind of feedback here. 
Yeah, I so I have this ring, um, and it basically tracks meditations. And let me see if I can pull something up for you guys here. But we we've literally started to like quantify this stuff on what happens when we sit in these spaces. When we and when, um, when we sit in these spaces, he's he, because I know he's looking at it. So we're talking. So what we want to bring through to you guys, and we'll do a small practice here in just a little bit is like how how do we sit in meditation not so that what most people think about meditation which is a stress relieving tool meditation is probably the most powerful healing tool on planet earth i just want you to just sit with that for a moment meditation is the single most powerful healing tool that we have on earth yeah so here check this out uh and you guys let me know if you can see you probably have to duck your head probably behind it yeah you okay probably there you go Oh, there you go. Move, move your face behind the phone because it's going to track your face first. And the other okay. So, so here you can kind of see. So the first one is heart rate. So you can see as like as we go through the process, the heart rate is literally dropping. The next one, this is like the more amazing one, is <clears throat> this is heart rate variability. So this basically means like your body is going into a rest and digest state, meaning it's like this is where your body is healing itself without you being a participant. So this is what happens like when you sleep, you want your heart rate variability to be variable, right? And so you can see as we go deeper into the meditation, you can see that the variability goes higher. And then the other thing, the last one is body temperature. And this is just kind of tracking that. Now, all this to be said, and guy kind of like took us down this little, little side windy road here. But like, I want to bring it back to this judging yourself piece. We, he was talking about parts, right? And like some of the, the work that we do is, is steeped in internal family systems and Hakomi and things like that. We just marry it with a lot of energy. And this part that I was highlighting before, right? Like that we're all very, very present to. How many of you guys though, when the ju like when this part is gnawing at you, even though you know that this voice, I'm sure most of you already by now know, like this is not revolutionary, that the voice inside your head is not you, right? You guys are with me? You know that the voice inside your head is not you? Okay, just let me know if that's a, that's a yes as we're going through this. Um, how many of you guys are aware though that it's not just one voice in your head, but you have hundreds of, of different voices that are participating in the conversation. How many for you, when I say that, like that you're an actual schizophrenic, um, like that to you is like, whoa, I didn't really realize that it's more than one voice. How many of you guys for that? It's, it's kind of new information. The reason that we say that, Guy had mentioned before that like these parts get trapped in time. So I want you to just think back to you growing up and who in your life, was it mom or was it dad, was the one that judged you harshly? Just let me know, mom, dad, grandparent, guardian, whatever it is, like who in your life was the one that was constantly telling you that you needed to do better? You needed to be better at school. You needed to work harder to perform at sports. You needed to like, it was this in, it, constant thing of like being, yeah, someone said judge, like someone is constantly reflecting back to you. Stepmother. Beautiful. So you can kind of start to see. Now, something interesting that you guys may want to note is that when kids are young, they don't have their own voice in their heads. Hmm. When kids are very young, like like that voice doesn't get created till probably we're like three, four years old, right? So for the first, here's what's really interesting. At the beginning, there is something that we hear, but what they have found it out to be is mom's voice and dad's voice. So in the beginning, it's like mom's voice, dad voice in our head, but it's very clearly someone else's voice in our head. At some point, the voice merges and becomes part of you and it becomes you. And that's when we think like, oh, we're, we're that person. 
So here's what I want you to get that every single human on planet Earth has, okay? I'm going to give you, I call mine the judger. I have the inquisitor. I have the doubter. I have like, there's hundreds of these parts, the manager, the doer, like we've just kind of like named all these parts because really what you're wanting to create first and foremost is space. If you are that, then you're just controlled by that. Right? So when someone told you there's a voice in your head, that for the first time ever gave you space. We call it subtle mind awareness. It gave you space to go, wait, like, I'm not the one talking to me. Like, this is some other thing talking to me. I'm actually just listening and receiving this. That was a profound moment in your life. And that gave you space. And that gave you choice because now it's like, I can choose to listen to this part or I cannot choose to listen to this part. Then someone told you something else that was rather stupid and made you probably work incessantly on this is like, what I need to do is quiet that thing so it doesn't talk to me anymore and then I'll be okay. How many of you guys have meditated, say I, like meditated with this notion that all you're trying to do in meditation is quiet the mind. Get this thing to shut the fuck up. doesn't work. It will never work. And I can tell you from people like we worked with a Rinpoche. This guy's been literally in the Himalaya caves for 50 years of his life. He was laughing at this notion mm -hmm. that Western cultures believe that the point of meditation is to quiet the mind. He goes, it is an impossibility. The mind talks. And so what I want to offer you is that there's a part of mind, the judger, that got created by either mom, like some of you guys had mentioned, dad, step parent, someone. And that judger, the same way that mom or dad or someone judged you, is how you now learn to judge self and others, your surroundings. Because in that moment, and this happened to every one of us, in that moment, what became clear was that who we are, the essence of who you are, the, the beingness, this divine light that who you are was not good enough. That was the message that got imprinted in here. And for the rest of your life from that moment, you have been playing this game of putting this mask on and this mask on and this mask on and this mask on to try to figure out which mask gets you what you want, which is love, belonging, acceptance, connection. And so this mask worked really well in this group, but it sucked at this group. So you came up with another mask and you're like, oh, I'll just put this on, on when I'm with these people. And I'll put this one on when I'm with these people. And I'll put the one on. Fucking exhausting. <laughs> right? And this judger the entire time the entire time, this judger is constantly telling you like, why would you say that? That's so stupid. They're going to think that you're an idiot now. Are you kidding me? You're really going to wear that out? You look so fat in it. Oh, you're the worst. Like, you're so ugly. You're so stupid. You're less than this person. You're less than that person. On and on and on and on. And we buy this hook, line, and sinker. Don't we? I see somebody doing like a sad emoji. Yeah, like this is it. This is where I want you to get 99.9% .9 of humanity lives at the effect of this judger. And we give everyone a pass because we know that everyone has this judger. And we're like, don't call out, don't call me out. I won't call you out because I know already that you're beating yourself up. Some people don't care that much, but like, that's in essence, we're just everyone giving each other a pass. So what I want to offer is this. Right now, just like as we're sitting here and we're obviously poking at this part quite a lot, I want you to just in whatever way this this feels for you just feel 
if you can, where this part lives. Like just notice in your body where this part lives. Because here's the cool part. Here's the cool news about parts is they don't move around. Like once you find a part where that part is, that part is always going to be there. It doesn't like move to the basement and then move to the penthouse. And then like, it's just like, it stays put because it got trapped in this one area. Yeah. And like, I'm just reading what Susan wrote here. You're just fat. You'll never be able to do anything. You can't do anything correct, et cetera. Like, this is it. Like how many of you guys have had that judger say that to you? I'm, I'm going to tell you my judger. So I, I, when I was three, something happened. I'm not going to get into it. The story that I uh, figured out was that I'm a loser. And so my judger in a effort to make sure that no one else knows that I'm a loser created a strategy to push me, right? Like, like a motivational speaker push me to always win. And it was incessant. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter if it was dating. It didn't matter if it was school. It didn't matter if it was sports. It didn't matter. It was constantly yelling at me to do more, do faster, do better. And the big shift came, and I'll, I'll have guys share about this now, is like the big shift comes when you give up the fight mm -hmm. to try to fix this thing, change this thing, or make this thing shut up. How many of you guys have for a long time been reading books and doing work to try to make the mind quieter and these parts that yell at you be quiet. Just let us know in the comment box. Like, and this is really important for you to get. Like, how long have you been trying to get these parts to quiet down? And what I would offer is, as you're writing that, it's like there's a fight. Once, you, once you've made this part of you bad, as in like something to get rid of or change or overcome, once that choice is made, you're now in a fight in a war, internal war with this part. And I don't know about you guys, but if you go to war with a tantrum three-year-old and you say, hey, I'm just going to lock you up in this closet and you don't get to talk to me anymore because you're not nice, <clears throat> the part's not like, oh, I'm sorry, Elon. You know, you're absolutely <laughs> right. I will sit here. I will think about what, what I have done to you. And when you want to come and talk to me, you just let me know. I'll be behind this door. You come knock. Oh, fuck no. Banging, screaming, kicking down doors, destroying the room, whatever, until you give in and let the thing out. And so first thing to get is like you're in a fight, not only with a judger, with all the parts, but today we're just going to focus on the judger. Like you're in a fight with the judger. So the game is like, how do we get to a place where we can give up the fight? Hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. So, so yeah. So in contrast to that, just to kind of put some meat on the bones here and to show you through your own experience, because what we want to do is we don't want to convince you of anything. That would be silly, right? Like you have your life experience, you have your unique perspective. This is what makes you special and gifted in this world, regardless of what you guys think. Like what makes people special is, is their unique perspective of, of, godliness basically right like from their point of view we spend a lot of time arguing about who's right but that's this is like very old thinking we're transitioning into this place where it's like we need to start valuing the fact that we have different perspectives and that each person's actually enabling society to see a more holistic view of reality right and so how many of you guys have been in a situation that's really really difficult obviously we all have been but but you get to a place where you've tried everything, you've worked your ass off, you've done all the things, and it's like nothing is working. You haven't moved this this thing that happens. Then, right, the things seem dire, but you get to a place where you're like, you know what? 
I'm gonna let the chips fall where they may. Like I'm 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 done trying, and you just kind of like lift up your hands up, and you're like, whatever happens at this point in time. This is a true surrender, <clears throat> a point of non-attachment. And you tell me what usually rapidly or shortly happens right after you do that. It's as if the hands of God itself, him or herself, I don't like to put a gender on God, you know, kind of like scoops and this like magical event just unfolds and you're like, and it kind of resolves itself. We want to look, and if you've experienced that, say I, because I want people to see in the chat box that you're not alone in this experience. We've, we've asked this question of tens of thousands of people, almost universally, everyone will say something like that has happened in my life, okay? And so if that is you, I want you to realize this is a universal experience to a very high degree and that there is a phenomena, a play, that if we identify, we can start using to our, to our advantage. It's not really an advantage, but we're working with it so that we can find this point of really neutral leverage. Yeah, it's a Jesus take the wheel moment, exactly. Right. And then and then something really special happens, whether it's Jesus or some energy to me. I, I don't care what your initial beliefs are on that. But like we want to let's just to bring it more into the mainstream of consciousness. We'll just say like some kind of energy is at play, like something moves things forward. Right. If it's Jesus for you. Fantastic. So. <clears throat> so what we want to look at is how do we actually use our awareness in a conscious way? Because where where most of us are doing the work from is we're doing it from our neocortex, our cognitive mind, right? We have the reptilian, we have this million mind, and then we have this like very complex neocortex mind that's pretty pretty new in, in the scope of evolution, and has you know created this this experience of being human for us. And so what we want to learn is we want to learn how to calm down our system, okay? And everywhere we look now, whether it's in uh, uh, you know, naturopathic sciences, uh, homeopathic health, dif different things like this. What we find is that everything is trying to bring your body or your awareness to a neutral point. Einstein called this uh, zero sum. Oh, I'm sorry, not zero sum, zero point energy. Zero sum is a totally different thing. A zero, zero point energy. <clears throat> and if anybody's ever experienced zero point energy, like, uh, it, you know, there are these little devices out there. I remember with, with our mom, for example, first time I ever came across a zero point device, our mom needed uh, re like shoulder surgery. Like she couldn't really move her shoulder much above this. This was really, really painful for her. And this guy brought over this pen to our house and it was a, a zero point energy pen. And all we did was just wand our mom like this. The granted, she had been like this for two years. She He wands it like this. And what zero point does is actually reminds the cells and the tissue of source. Said another way, the neutral point, right? Like it's it's originating point. And then you just see my mom go like this. Yeah. Like freely move her arm around after two years of not being able to go more than this. I was like, whoa. Right. Like it was mind blowing. We bought three pounds on the spot. <laughs> it, was a very good, it was a good sales pitch. Uh, anyway, so what we want to understand is how do we do that for ourselves? Like what is the what is the actual practice? And meditation is that practice. However, what most people are doing in meditation, like Elon said, is they're trying to quiet the mind instead of observing what the mind is doing. And then the way that we can do that. So Elon had mentioned about subtle mind awareness, right? So what subtle mind awareness allows you to do is to notice that you are doing this, what, what most humans do, you have sub vocalization. You have this like, this thing narrating life to you. And it feels as if the thing that's listening to it, or it feels like it, like you're just listening to this incessant chatter. But if you notice that you're listening to it, like that you're actually the one observing it, you kind of get a little space from the sub vocalization and you start realizing huh, no, this voice is actually separate from me. It's more a mechanism within me that has a lot of opinions. However, it's very easy to get drawn in, sucked in and merge with this part and actually think that it's you. And it takes some practice to realize, oh, no, no, I can actually listen to it. And even though these thoughts are fucking heinous or great or good, or you know, it's, it's usually not very pleasant things that this is saying because what it's concerned with is your survival. It's just trying to create safety. That's all That's all these mechanisms are trying to do. They are, for whatever reason, based on the trauma that you experienced, in that moment, what had you survive is this pattern that got developed. 
You guys need to understand that if too much energy would hit a child's system at one time and it wasn't managed and mitigated intuitively by our bodies, it would actually kill the child. The child is way too sensitive. And so if you kind of figure out, like this is what's happening to adults is we've just armored up so much and then we think I'm not sensitive. I don't feel anything at all, you know, but it's really just these safety protocols inside the body. And, and while you've armored up good and it's maybe helping you survive, that's really all you're stuck with is just this these survival patterns that you're playing. And then like this natural, authentic part of ourselves, we kind of lose connection with and we have the sense of like, I don't actually know who I am. I don't, I'm not really getting pleasure from my life, but it's like you're actually not deeply connected with yourself anymore. It's just identity, parts, ego, right? So, so, how, so what do we want to understand is that your body, your heart, your stomach is part of, the, of your mind. This is all really one mechanism. And what disables us from accessing all this is that we spend and localize our awareness up here in the neocortex, okay? So we call this the conditioned mind. This is the mind that mom and dad taught you. This is the mind that you picked up from what society is and from your culture and your religion. And this is also why everything that's not that to this conditioned mind, it, it appears like a threat, okay? It actually biochemically to your conditioned mind when things are not in agreement with the, its version of reality, feels like a knife coming at your face. You don't have to travel very far down your newsfeed and read a few comments to understand why people are saying what they're saying to each other because that's the biochemical response that they're having. They're like, you are threatening my conditioned reality. It feels like you're trying to kill me. So I'm going to attack back, right? This is what I'm going to do because I got to protect myself. I got to create safety in this moment. And that's just what the body does. So that's what the system does. So what's the first thing that we want to learn? That's what we're going to do here right now with you guys as a little practice is how do we unhook from this conditioning? Because if you cannot unhook from this conditioning, then you cannot view it. You can't like if you're in here, it's like you have an object, object reality. You're an object and there's an object over there and it's just object, object, object. But if you can come out of this awareness, you can uh, unlocalize what's called unlocalizing your awareness, you're going to suddenly see that you have a much more subjective point of view. You can actually watch what's occurring. Let me give you an example of why, why you know this works too, is when friends come to you for advice and you suddenly give this incredible response to them that's very insightful. Why is that? Why? Because you are not in their reality. So you are not an object object in their reality. You are a subjective observer to their reality. And so you have these insights that are much more keen, have a much wider perspective, and can suddenly give your friend a story or a perspective or a point of view, whatever you want to call it, that enables for them to like kind of sidestep their reality and be like, oh, that's interesting, if they're open enough to it, of course, and like start walking down a different reality that creates a different result in their life. You know, probably a lot of you guys on here are the person that like family and friends come to for advice right because of the work that you've done you've, you've attained some subjectivity and so meditation allows us to enter an unlocalized awareness that has a much more subjective reality perspective that's the ultimate mind the big mind reality that can just watch what our body and what our mind is doing from a neutral place and just like zero point energy, locating this part of your mind is like walking around with the zero point observer. Okay. And what ends up happening is when we are in this place and when we, we watch from this place is we start taking advantage of this, this neutrality principle. And your body, again, I'm going to show you examples of this, knows how to heal itself, not just physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and it knows how to do it already. It's very innate. However, it does not do it when you interject all the time. It does not do it when you apply pressure upon it. It does not do it when you try to force an outcome and make your system do something. Your body, if anybody's ever uh, read that book, the body keeps the score. They talk about that in, in great detail in that book, right? It's like, it's keeping score. It also has its own timing, its own pace and a way that it heals, right? Like if you cut your finger, for example, you know that there is um, like an intelligence that brings that finger back to form exactly as it was before. There is an intelligence that when you break a bone, 
it brings that bone back to form just as it was before. Notice that you didn't apply any pressure. You didn't have to sit there and think about it. You didn't have to visualize. Certainly that might help, but you know, to some degree, like if you like bring awareness to this part of you and, and stuff like that, I can explain why that, that works sometimes as well. But there's, a, there's this intelligence that's bringing things back to this neutral point. And so we want to learn how do we cultivate a practice that allows our awareness to live in that all the time. And so that when something is arising in our system, we give it space to just move through and our body actually brings itself back into a neutral point. In scientific terminology, this would be uh, the vagal ner nervous system and a parasympathetic response in your body. Okay, nothing happens in your body. Nothing happens in terms of healing, intuition, gifts that come online until your body is in a relaxed state. Nothing happens until your body is in a relaxed state. Just think about again, like when you're in a, um, like taking a shower and you have an intuitive hit. The reason is when you're underwater, the body is just naturally more relaxed. You're getting a more parasympathetic rest and digest response. Boom, you get this like intuition that just starts flowing through and you, you know, you're, you wish you had a pen and paper to write it down. Okay. So why don't we take a few minutes here and we're going to give you a, a quick demo and show you how easy it is to unhook from a, unlo from a local mind to an unlocalized mind. Okay. Now, even though this is easy, it is very easy. Everything we teach you is very, very simple, very easy to do, very fluid. This requires practice like anything else, because your mind is going to immediately go back to its conditioning. It's going to want to just relocalize here. And it takes daily practice, really, like everything else in life that's worth doing and mastering to start living a life that's more unhooked from this conditioning. And the more that you practice this, the more the conditioning can naturally basically heal itself. It can just move through the system. These parts that have been stuck for decades in your life will start moving. And this will all happen in your body's own timing because only your body knows its timing, its divine intelligence, how to do this. Elon and I are not healers. We don't know how, what timing it is for you. And, and principally, we don't believe that anybody else does because only your body and soul is connected to this intelligence. So only your body and soul can know the timing and, and, the, and the wisdom in which to do this in. What we want to learn is how do we create the environment and cultivate an energy that allows for that to happen all the time. So that even as you're walking down the street, it's like you're just healing. Even as you're in a business meeting, it's just, it's just the energy just moving, it's just healing. And that's the foundation that we want to help everyone set and then marry with the mindset work so that you can just amplify everything that you're doing. Okay, so does that sound good? Is there anything you want to add, bro? Yeah, I just dropped uh, a message in there. So we're going to do this quick little experience, but we actually recorded a uh, meditation and it's a, we call it active meditation. Active and it will actually walk you through this practice of finding the parts in yourselves that are wanting your attention in this very moment and helping you use this kind of zero point energy that guy's pointing to and allow it to process and release from your system without the mind, right? Like a lot of the times we do personal development work and it's, okay, let me figure out when this got created, who it got created with, why it got created. Let me change the story. And you're basically like creating these micro shifts, which are in essence like new stories that you're creating for your brain to listen to in hopes that life changes. And it, it can, but the problem is that that keeps coming back, right? Because the part that's actually creating the response. So, right. So back to my judger loser story, the judger got created when mom and dad were doing their thing. Right. But the judger in essence is trying to protect me from a hurt, like the abandonment hurt, like the heart shattering, I'm all on my own hurt that I experienced, the judger is actually, in essence, trying to protect me from having that feeling happen again. And so through the meditation in the active meditation is, it's the ability to actually witness these parts, all of them the part that protect, the part that's really hurt, the part that's annoyed, the part that's frustrated. And as we bring this level, what we call the awareness effect to these aspects, 
they naturally fall away. They naturally begin to shift. And so I posted in here, like, if you guys want that long meditation, um, just comment meditation and we'll have our team. We have Tobias, who you guys will get to meet. Um, we have Corey here and Jasmine and Nikki. Like, there's, there's an amazing group of people here that are willing and ready to... Tobias will even jump on the phone with you for like five minutes just to share any other resources or anything that you guys are wanting. So um, make sure you drop that and we'll make sure that they come in here and and connect with you guys to to get that uh, meditation from you. Yeah. So just so you guys see, uh, this is Tobias, Corey and Nikki. Uh, Jasmine's also here in the community. And so this is the people that you'll be talking to that support our community. Um, if anybody is interested in having a conversation with Tobias, uh, we don't allow him to sell anything on these calls. This is just a literally a here, you know, it, it might just be a call where you're like, I just need to know where resources are. Great. You know, we'll get those resources to you. Or it's like, you just can ask, start asking questions about what it is that we actually do here, how these programs work. And you guys can determine together whether it's appropriate for you to take the next step. And then he will, uh, hook you up with Corey and Nikki to have a conversation if it's appropriate at that time. So use him as a resource. It's a free call. Um, and that, that way you guys can get some perspective on exactly what it is that we're doing here um, and get you know your personal questions answered with him, okay? So why don't you guys, uh, if you're watching, take a seat. You don't need to man the chat box right now. <clears throat> and I'm gonna do a very, very simple demo for you in terms of locating your awareness and then how to create more spaciousness with it. So you get more of the subjectivity um, the part we won't get into and the part that's in the meditation is like once you're there, how do you look at your system? Like how do you actually use that level of mind? Because it is a different level of mind. It's a higher a higher frequency state to look back at the energy in your body and actually use it as a practice to help move that energy so it can metabolize, downregulate your parasympathetic nervous system response. And then these parts just kind of take care of themselves. And you see as you do this over time, you start having these wild experiences where you're in situations that cause you stress, overwhelm, anger, whatever. Someone says that thing that usually boils you over and nothing happens. Like there's just no response, you know, like, and you know that that thing is happening, but there's no response happening in the, bo in the body. So there's no response needed by the mind. If you want to heal your mind, heal your body, heal the response that's happening here, the subtle, subtle response. Okay. So just take your right hand and put it up next to you. And we're really just using the hand as a pointer for your awareness more than anything. And so I don't want you to look at your hand with your eyes. I just want you to place awareness on that hand or in that hand. Okay, so just place awareness on your hand. And then take a few seconds and just start noticing your hand. Like what did we notice now about your hand that maybe a second ago or five seconds ago wasn't happening? And since you're not in front of me on the stage, I'll just give you answers that we normally get and you look for yourself if you're starting to experience this, is that maybe you start feeling uh, heat or cooling or tingles in your hand, maybe a pulsing in your hand. And I want you to just notice if you can that just a moment ago that wasn't happening. And now it is. And just so you see that it's not a fluke, you can put that hand down, put your left hand up, put your awareness on your left hand. And again, I want you to notice just very quickly, you're going to start noticing what we simply call just increased sensation. That's what we're really looking for. Do you feel more sensation in your hand with your awareness on it than you do with your hand off it? And again, you can now contrast that with the other hand and notice that there's a lot more seemingly sensation in the hand where the awareness is than the hand where the awareness is not. It's like one is warm and one is cool. Okay. So that's something to notice. <laughs> and what's actually happening is you guys have all heard this line that where your attention goes, energy flows. And that's actually what's happening. We are placing our awareness on there. Notice, by the way, I did not tell you how to use your awareness. You innately and intuitively know every human does. There's no manual for this. We just know how to. And that there is a biophysical response. And what's actually happening is as you place awareness here, energy is collecting in the space that we're calling our hand. And then energy like a, like a magnet, energy like a magnet uh, acts to pull more resource and blood to this area. 
also something to notice that we're actually resourcing this part of ourselves by just holding awareness on it and so if you've ever heard stories of like yogis healing themselves faster or like spontaneous remission this is one of the ways that this can happen is by becoming hyper aware you know dr joe dispenza talks about this all the time um it's like actually pulling more nutrition right through the blood flow and stuff like that and so obviously if you continue to do that like if there were a cut here or something like that it would probably heal faster right okay so now just again just so you notice it's not a fluke um, put your awareness on your left foot and again just starting to notice as you place awareness on a foot if you're noticing more sensation I notice if there's any other responses or lack thereof now like maybe if you were feeling some tension notice as you move awareness maybe that you are actually even if it's just very subtly feeling more grounded suddenly or a little bit more relaxed or maybe less tension okay we just want to notice all, all elon and i do is point at what you already have what you already do that's exactly how children learn something happens the parent points and so what m none of us have been taught for the most part is no one's pointed at our awareness everything was pointed out externally outside of us and so we learn about the external world and we completely negate the inner world and what we don't realize is that our outer world is a reflection of our inner world so if you want things to change outside of yourself you need to become hyper aware of what's happening inside of yourself and so this is the beginning of you becoming noticing that there is this part of you that can become aware and actually have some kind of effect on energy and on you know your biophysical being okay so let's just again bring our hands next to our head and kind of use these as like antennas because the hands don't matter that's what i want you to get what it matters is the awareness but for a lot of people when they first start playing with awareness they need like a place to place it okay and what we're doing is we are coming so we're we're unhooking from our from our conditioned mind and we're coming out into spaciousness around our mind so see if you could place awareness on both hands and then if you can you can actually drop the hands again it's okay if you can't but just as a test drop the hands but leave the awareness in the space like leave your awareness around your head somewhere it could be all around your head For some people, this is easier with eyes closed. Certainly was for me in the beginning. I think Elon would agree. Now we can just do it with eyes open. Just like a muscle. And if you notice that there's a toggling happening, like you're here, and then you're here, 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 it's totally fine. Don't try to control the toggle. Don't even try to stop the toggle. Just notice that there is a toggle. Like you go to conditioned, and then you come back out. And again, I want you to notice if there's some kind of response to your body as you come into the spaciousness. And if you want to go much deeper with this, then take advantage of the meditation that Elon uh, is proposing that you guys pick up. It's very, very powerful. And we promise you, if you practice that for a week, you're going to start seeing a shift immediately. Because just, just a little bit of this practice every single day starts cultivating this, this awareness and this energy in the body. And then your awareness literally has somewhere else to go other than your conditioned mind. You become a subjective observer or what Michael Singer calls the seat of awareness observer. And people think this is the end game. It really is just where the game begins. That's where like really fun stuff starts happening when you can cultivate that and kind of like lock that awareness into a more spaciousness. Okay. So again, just noticing your body and we're, we're coming up on time here, guys. So again, if you want to, um, if you want to learn how to cultivate this, you have questions about the work that we do here. We have a bunch of different programs. We take people through an Ascension program, lots of different things that you guys can do and opportunities. I won't get into it. That's why we have the support team. If you want someone to reach out to you from our support team, in the comment box below, just say, contact me, or I'm interested. Just indicate to us in some way, shape, or form that you'd like to have a conversation with somebody. And then one of these fine people from our team uh, will reach out to you. Uh, again, touch with you and let you know how you can book a call with Tobias. You guys can ask your questions, see if what we're doing here is appropriate for you. Again, we don't sell anything on that first call at all. So there's no pressure for you to make a decision of any kind. It really is just a clarity call um, and a support call for you guys. Okay. Thank you for being here today. Your, your attention and awareness is very precious to us. 
we hope that you got value from today's conversation, that this is insightful, and that it piques some curiosity for you about the type of work that's being done here. Truly, this work can only be learned through direct experience, not through understanding a formula of any kind. You need to really experience it for yourself to truly appreciate it. So we hope that you guys uh, are curious, come ask questions, and uh, come take a ride with us so we can show you how deep the rabbit hole really goes. We love you very much. Thank you again for being part of our community, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody.